the power and the authority in the mighty name of Jesus. Thank you, Father, for answer prayers. In Jesus' name we pray. Praise God. I would like us to be seated as we listen to God's word. Praise God. For the sake of those that are watching me here for the first time, we meet here every Wednesday, 12 to 1 p.m. Call it lunch hour service. We come to pray to God for God to bless the work of our hands. We come to pray to God for our careers, for our ministries, for the work of our hands, for our businesses, that the Almighty God should prosper us. God is not against the prosperity of his people. God is not against us prospering. The Bible speaking in the book of Tom, John verse 2 said, I wish above all things that thou mayest prosper and be in health even as thy soul prospers. So it is the wish of God. It is the blessing, it is the wish of God that his children prospers. It is an aberration for you to be serving God and be begging for bread. The Bible says, once I was young, now I'm old, I have not seen the righteous forsaken, nor his seed beg for bread. As a child of God, it's an aberration, it's forbidden for you to beg for bread. And that is what the enemy wishes, and that's why he fights the, work, the, 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 the works of our heads. And that's why we are here today to pray that the Almighty God will bless the work of our hands, that the Almighty God will never allow the plans and the purpose of the adversary concerning the words of our hands to come to pass. And that's why we are here tonight, today. And the Almighty God will answer our prayers in Jesus' name. Amen. Today we are looking at the topic titled, Diligence, Key to Destiny Fulfillment. Diligence, Key to Destiny Fulfillment. Now, we all know the meaning of that word, diligence. Diligence literally means hard work. To be hard working. Our God is not against hard work. As a matter of, as a matter of fact, our God is a hard worker. <laughs> Jesus Christ attested to this in the book of John chapter 5 verse 17. said, my father worketh and I work. <laughs> my father worketh and I work. You cannot be a child of God and be lazy. <laughs> God hates laziness in all his forms and application. And our God is a hard-working God. God showed us in the beginning, when he started, when he created the heaven and the earth. The Bible says on the seventh day, God rested from all his works. God rested from all his works. And he showed us an example that when we walk, we should, set, we should also find time to rest. So it's not against us resting, but we must not be sluggard. We must not be lazy. And that's why we are here this morning, this afternoon, so we can learn how to be diligent. The Bible also speaking in the book of John chapter 9 verse 4. It said, I must do the work of him that sent me. Why is his day? For the night cometh when no man can walk. The night time is the time when, the man, when you are old and feeble. The strength to walk is no longer there. And that's why Jesus said, I will do the work of him that sent me why it is day for the night cometh when no man can walk. I'm giving us all the scriptures so that we can know that our God is not against hard work. You cannot be a child of God and be lazy. You cannot be a child of God and be sleeping 12 hours a night <laughs> and you wish God to bless you. God will spank you. Get up and walk. <laughs> Praise God. Now I'm going to be giving us a scripture the Bible speaking in Proverbs 22:29. Proverbs 22:29 says, "Seest thou a man diligent in his business, he shall stand before kings and not mean men." Seest thou a man diligent in his business, he shall stand before kings; he shall not stand before mean men. If you see a man that is hardworking. You have seen a man that will get to the top. If you see a man that is hardworking and that love God, that prays, you have seen a man that will stand with kings. You have seen a man that will not stand before mean men, that will not stand before loafers. It is biblical for us to be diligent. Now, for us to understand that word diligence, diligence means steady, steady, 
MS an energetic effort that will put in into our work so that we can accomplish sources in it. I'm going to take it again. It means steady, earnest, energetic efforts that we put into our work so that we can accomplish sources from it. I would like us to take note of those three words. They are very, very important in this, in this definition. Steady. Steady means to be continuous. Not once in a while. You cannot do your work once in a while and expect, expect to achieve great results with this. You cannot go to work on Monday and on Tuesday you are resting. On Wednesday you are resting. You go again on Friday and you think God will bless that work. You have shown God that you are a lazy man. God will not bless laziness. You have to be steady. You have to be continuous in the work that you do. That is what God will bless. Says, seest thou a man diligent in his business, he shall stand before kings. He shall not stand before me men. Now the definition again means steady, earnest, steady, earnest, and energetic effort that we put into our work so that we can accomplish success. That is the meaning of that word, diligence. Diligence, steady, earnest. Now, I've talked about being steady. To be steady means to be continuous. <coughs> continuous. Now, earnest means to be sincere, honest with your work. God will not bless a work that is not sincere. Where sincerity is not, it's, it's not in it. You cannot say you are a child of God and a business you do, you are duping people. God will not bless that kind of work. God will only bless a world that involves sincerity in it. That involves sincerity in it. So I would like us to take note, you are going to be steady, you are going to be earnest in the work, and you are going to put in energetic efforts. <laughs> Which time I remember, I remember, now I remember the scripture that we just read earlier, uh, John 9, 4. Jesus said, I will do the work of him that sent me while it is day. For the night cometh when no man can walk. You can see this scripture supports this definition. Said so he will do the work of him that sent him. That means he's going to be doing the work steadily, continuously. Said so he's going to do it again while it is day. While it is day, the daytime of any man is the time of your youth, the time when you're still strong, when you're still energetic. So in essence, Jesus is saying, I will do this work steadily, earnestly, and with my energy being put in. You cannot be lazy and expect God to bless your work. Energy is involved. <laughs> energy is involved. Even sleeping requires some energy because you breathe. <laughs> Not to talk about work. Work requires energy. So all those three things must be involved. It must be steady. It must be earnest. It must be energetic. You apply energy. You apply your efforts. That is what God will bless. Praise God. Amen. Now the Bible also asks us to go and learn from the ant. From the ant. <laughs> Let us see Proverbs chapter 6 from verse 6. He said we should go and learn from the ants. Learn wisdom from the ants. As tiny as the ant is, they are filled with wisdom. They are hard workers. So the Bible says we go and learn from them. Let's see how we can learn from the ant. Chapter 6, verse 6. Proverbs chapter 6 from verse 6. I will take it one by one. Say, go to the ant, thou sluggard. To be sluggard means to be lazy. Go to the ant, thou sluggard. Consider her ways and be wise. Go to the ants, thou sluggard, thou lazy man. Consider the ways of the ants and become wise. Verse 7. Which having no guide, overseer, or ruler, <laughs> provided her meat in the summer and gathered her food in the harvest. The Bible says the ant does not have any guide. He doesn't have any overseer. He doesn't have any ruler. That means he doesn't have anyone to motivate it in the morning and say, wake up, go and work. Nobody to rule him. Nobody to tell him this is what you should do. 
But the ant, in his own wisdom, will rise up very early to go and walk. Said in summer, he will provide for his own. I have gathered her food in the harvest. So, I, 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 mean, I want to show that every, there is no one of us that have not seen ants around our houses. You see how busy it is as they are. No wonder the, 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 the Englishman says, as busy as the ants. Very busy. The ants, they are very busy. Say they are as busy as the ants. You see the ants? Around your houses, you see them moving around. <laughs> Moving around, you think they don't know where they are going. They are calculated. They are calculated. Most of the time, you see them going through one line. No, nobody is teaching them. Nobody is guiding them. Nobody is about seeing them. They are going to store their food so that when winter comes, when they can't go out to look for food, they have enough food to eat. So what the Bible is telling us in essence is that we should make hay while the sun shines. We should not procrastinate. We should do the right thing at the right time. When you are still full of energy, do the work so that in your old age, you will have something to fall back at. Don't waste your youth. The energy you have now is not for immorality. The energy that God has given for you now is supposed to be used positively. To gain something good for yourself and to be of a blessing to your world. It is not the time to take hard drugs. It is not the time to destroy yourselves and think you are enjoying. Please wake up. Learn from the ants. The ant does not have any ruler. Nobody is advising the advising the ants. Nobody is advising the ants. But the ant knows that early in the morning he has to get, get, get up to work. Nobody is motivating the ants that today will be blessed, it will be fine. Even though yesterday was not fine, the ants will still work for the following day. So let us learn from the ants. Motivate yourself in the Lord. And the Bible says that David encouraged himself in the Lord. Encourage yourself in the Lord and get up to work. Don't be lazy. Verse 8. So he provided her meat in the summer and gathered her food in the harvest. Verse 9. How long without sleep, O sluggard, where will thou arise out of thy sleep? Yet a little sleep, a little slumber, a little folding of the hands to sleep, so shall thy poverty come as one that traveleth, and I want as an armed man. <laughs> Praise God. God is telling you, I don't know anyone as many as are under the sound of my voice this morning, or this afternoon. The Almighty God is telling you to wake up from your, sl your slumber. Get up from bed, go and walk. So that your, your, your want will not be like an armed man. So that you don't beg for bread. To get up to work. Praise God. Now, what are those things we need to do for us to accomplish great sources with our diligence? Now, being diligent, number one, learn skills. Learn skills. <laughs> I've seen many graduates today, they will tell you you will finish from school. <laughs> and they are going about with their CVs. One year, two years, three years, four years, five years. I'm looking for a job. That five years that you have been in have been at home, why don't you learn a skill? Why don't you learn a skill? Now, even when you have a skill, you still need to be improving yourself continuously. In your area of business, improve yourself. Don't be using the, the, the knowledge of yesterday to want to face the market of today. Those that know how to use typewriter, IBM typewriter, about 20, 30 years ago, if they feel how to learn to develop their skill in, with the computer age, they may be out of business because they are not improving themselves. So in your area of business, in your area of, of business, 
develop yourself regularly. Develop yourself, update yourself so that you can be relevant in your area of business. Number two, don't procrastinate. Learn from the from the ant. The ant does not procrastinate. It doesn't set out the work for today, for tomorrow. Say tomorrow I will do it. When it is summer, it will gather its food. <laughs> it is providing its food so that at winter it will harvest, it will have harvest and have something to eat. So the work of today, do it today. Don't procrastinate. Number three, be self motivated be self motivated motivate yourself every day and rise up from bed tell yourself tomorrow today will be better than yesterday yesterday may not be good tell yourself that tomorrow or today will be better than yesterday and my tomorrow will be better than my today motivate yourself don't let anybody begin to don't let don't wait until people come to you to motivate you before you go out to work praise god Number four, be steady. Let your work be a continuous thing. Be steady in your work. Don't give yourself, don't work for one day and give yourself four days on the day. You work for one day and have four days on the holiday. You cannot prosper that way. Number five, be honest. That means be sincere. Be honest with the work that you do. 